about time. What's going on? Yo. Yo. Rumor report. Rumor report. This is the rumor report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on the Breakfast Club. Yes, so Lamar Odom's episode of Drink Champs dropped yesterday. So you guys have to see it. He talks about a lot of different things like Kobe Bryant. He talks about Jay-Z giving him advice about getting into the music industry. He also talks about, of course, Khloe Kardashian. And he also mentions that Kanye West was there for him during his troubled times and how much all of that meant to him. It looks like some things went a little bit left, though. So make sure you check out that Drake Champs interview with Lamar Odom. And according to yeah, Nori, I, Lamar Odom is the one that hit him up asking to come and do Drink Champs. I stand with Nori. OK, it's not uh, Nori's fault if Lamar wants to come and do Drink Champs. And it's not Nori's fault if Lamar Odom decides to drink or decides to smoke while he's there. Lamar knows, you know, the demons that he has and he knows what he needs to stay away from. So if he chooses to get in that environment and, and partake, that's on him. He a grown yeah. man. But he could have took the lick out. Come on, Nori. You, you know Why? that man is having It's a drink problem. champs. It is drink champs. It's they drink did champs. Shots what are you talking about? They could have did shots of juice. Man, they please. They know that man got a problem. And he got a problem problem. Well, he shouldn't have came to drink champs. That ain't Nori's fault. But it was an intended right, Nori. Well, Shout out to Nori. Yeah, he said that uh, Lamar Odom showed up kind of already a little tipsy or whatever. Mm-hmm. So... All right. Now, Steph Curry, he talks to Dr. Fauci on Instagram and he asked a lot of questions such as when are we getting a return to sports? What needs to happen in terms of, you know, the numbers or what metric are you looking at to be able to then determine at mass that, you know, large gatherings, sporting events, those type of things are okay to, you know, revisit as as not a threat to uh, continue the spread of the virus. What you need is you need to see the the trajectory of the curve start to come down. We've seen that in China. They went up and down. They're starting to get back to some normal life. Yeah, I watched that um, a little bit of that yesterday. And I, I, I keep wondering, like, if you test every basketball player and you test the referees and you don't have people in the stands, why can't they play the games? Mm. If everybody's negative, what, why, can't, why can't they congregate together and play? But then they say, well, what you if can, in between the time that it? you get to. Yeah. You yeah, can still have it and then show that you show don't up have it. Yeah, you, yeah. so that's mm. the problem. You don't want to play. And it could and also be that what if you, you get it later? in between the time you get tested and then by the time you come back because you came into contact with somebody else, you know, it's just too many different people moving around too much. And yeah, I, I think in it's a just hotel room or, you know, a you, bit you risky. Went to get something to eat. It's, it's very risky you traveling out there. So, yeah, I get it. All right. Now, since we're talking about sports, let's talk about fanatics and Michael Rubin. Now, Michael Rubin has committed to producing a million masks and gowns for hospitals and emergency health care workers over the next two months. As you know, Michael Rubin is a friend of The Breakfast Club and has been on the show a couple of different times. And he said, we're fortunate to have this giant factory in Pennsylvania that makes all these basketball jerseys. How do we make a difference? If you can make a difference, you've got to go out and do that. So he's going to have those things being made for the staff in Pennsylvania. And he's hoping to be able to expand into New York and New Jersey as well. And Mac Wilds, congratulations to him. Mac Wilds and his girlfriend have given birth to their first child. He's 30 years old, and there were rumors that he was having a baby, and he had posted about it, uh, you know, just a few months ago. He put, all right, serious moment. Earlier this year, I was in a really dark place. Honestly, I've been there for a while. I don't know. I was just letting life take me wherever she may. But I told God I needed a light. I needed a sign that I was supposed to be here and that my presence here on earth was needed. Heard you, God. Thank you for this. Merry Christmas. He had posted around Christmas. Christmas time. And since then, uh, he hasn't said much about it. But just this week, he then posted a picture of the baby and he said it was all good just a week ago of him with the stroller. Mm-hmm. So congratulations to Mac Wilds. Congrats to Mac Wilds. Salute to Mac Wilds. All right. And Alicia Keys has a new book called More Myself. And uh, there's a lot of things that she discusses in their book, in her book. She talks about when she was pregnant with her second child, just struggling and telling the doctor, this is the worst time ever. She was working on new music. She said, my husband just got into Harvard Business School and I've been drinking a lot. She said, I left her office feeling so torn. The music I was creating felt more important and urgent than just about everything. I'd have to put off its release for at least a year if I chose to have the baby. But then she did have a change of heart. She said she was in the studio and started listening to More Than We Know a song Swizz and I had written. The lyrics are about how we're capable of so much more than we can ever imagine. My eyes filled with tears. How could I take away the potential for this beautiful child, this light that could touch others in ways that I couldn't dream of? For me, the song was a powerful message that I should go on with the pregnancy. And of course, you know, she did. And they had their son, Genesis, in 2014. Yes, and I'm sure that's more fulfilling than any platinum album or any number one single 
would ever be. Because let's be for real, this business don't love you, but that child will love you forever. This business won't. Yep. She also talks about getting her first big check and going to Bergdorf's for the very first time. She said, if you ever roam the aisles of Bergdorf's and you understand how forcefully desire can grab you by the collar. Uh, she also said, Empire State of Mind, that song almost didn't happen. She said, for weeks, Jay had been reaching out to my manager about the collaboration. And when that went nowhere, he nearly gave up and called on another artist. So those are some of the things that she talks about in her new book. All her right, I'm Angela Yee. Jay back. I'm wow. confused, but I guess you have to read the book to get the whole entire story. I thought Alicia's on Rock Nation. This was, this was probably Rock Nation before existed, she was bro. on Rock oh. Nation. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your rumor report.